is a um, website for the students doing computer science at St. Louis School in Milan. Um, this is option A, databases. This also relates to some of our students' internal assessments where they have a database at the back end of a website. So I'm going to go through it very quickly. Um, this website will be up on slsmilan.com slash database so that you should be able to go in there and actually have a go at this and try all the different things. I'll put the files on the classroom so that you can download them and have a look and see how it works. So I've set up a simple database and I've entered in five pieces of information. Now the five pieces of information are five different musicians, um, a band, it's the Beatles, um, and I've put in the main key things that you need to know for your SQL database. So first of all, we'll just talk about SQL very quickly. SQL means structured query language and it's a way of storing data um, storing data that it, it's just raw data. It's not information until the human interprets it. It's just data. So that's what we're using as a SQL database here. Um, and we're running it at the moment through a local host. So here we go on the database. First thing that we've got is this is just a preview showing you um, the information that's in here. If I want to add information to the database, I click the add button and we get a little uh, drop down box down here that gives us some some add some information. So I want to enter a new artist's first name. So I'm going to put in Aretha Franklin, female, American, date of birth, uh, 1942, um, March 25th. So I click add and you'll see straight away that adds to the database and it's added her name here. She's come in as ID number seven now. And you're going to look at it and go, why is it one, two, three, four, five, seven? Because I've already tested the website. So as part of my process, I did some testing. I added someone and I removed them. So there we go. I've added um, Aretha Franklin in there. And you can see that that works. All right, what happens if I want to remove someone? I could go to remove. And there's a little bit of information down here. And basically what we're going to do is choose which ID along here we want to remove. So in this situation, we're going to remove number seven. We're going to remove Aretha that I just put in. So I could hit set ID there, hit seven, and then I hit delete. And that'll delete her entire row out of there. It'll be gone from the database. So if I hit delete, bang, there's the preview. You can see it's been removed. It's gone. Now what happens if I want to update the database? So I'm going to go to update here. And on this database, if you know anything about music, you'll see it's got Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Richard Starkey. Now, Richard Starkey was Ringo Starr's real name. So we want to update this to the name that most people would know him by, Ringo Starr. So we're going to go down and choose ID number four, because that's the person that we're going to update. We're going to change his name to Ringo, and we'll change his last name to Starr. It's got two R's. Ringo star and I hit update and it should update my database straight away and there you go you can see Ringo star is now in there instead of Richard Starkey same person All right we can also go preview if we go preview this just gives us a preview of what's currently in the database that's all it is now we've had that on every single page but this is actually running a query on the database and it's bringing back these results to get this table up here. So it's one of the things you need to know is how to run a query for your um, computer science uh, option A, right? All right, next one is search. And this is probably the most complicated one, but um, we've done it in class. You guys should be all right with this. We hit search. So here we have our table, our sample database here of the table. And we've got a little search box down here. And we can search by pretty much anything we want. You could search by the IDs, you could search by the first name, last name, date of birth, um, nationality, mail. Um, there's a few tweaks here, like if we search, say we search for number one, right? If we search for number one, we'll get ID number one, plus we'll get all of the date of birth that have a one in them, and all these people were born in, in the 1900s, so they've all got a one in them. So if we hit search, let's have a quick look at that. So we've got everyone, right? So let's go and do a different search. This time, let's do a search based on, say, just John. So we hit John, hit search, nothing, right? So we've just got one John, nothing else, that's it. So that's good, that's what we want to have. Let's do another search. We can do a search on, um, let's say, female. So we do a search on female, and we get one, right? So nothing else, just the one, right? So we go back, 
So you understand, we could do a search on any of these things. Or you could do a search on, say, 1940. Right? So if we do a search on 1940, we should get back Ringo Starr and John Lennon. They were both, both born in 1940. And there you go, Ringo Starr and John Lennon. So for your... Um, for the people who are using databases as part of their internal assessment, you need to have add, remove, update, preview or show the database, and you need to have a search function. If you don't have those things, you won't get the marks for the database section. So you need to make sure that you've got those five main features. Now to help you along with this, and for option A, the people who are doing option A, you need to um, understand all of this for option A. It starts back here at database skills. And over on the right-hand side here, we have um, this box here, this grey box here, that gives us information. So for the example here, we've used a database called data, Database Skills, and we've used a table called DB Skills. Okay, so Database, Database Skills, Table, DB Skills, right? So that's the information over here. If we go to Add, it shows you the section of SQL that you have to write in PHP, if you're doing it in PHP on a website, or just into the database directly. This shows you what you have to write to get the add function to work, right? So insert into the table called DB skills, these different columns of information, and this is actually getting the information that the user has chosen to write in here. It gets that information, and you can insert that into the table. If you go to remove, you're deleting from database skills everything, so we're deleting everything, where the ID equals whichever ID number we put in there. If you go to update, we're updating database skills and we're setting whatever they are in the columns to the new features. Now, in this situation, I've updated only the first name and the surname. You could add extra um, input fields and you could update everything if you wanted to update everything. Not that I think someone's date of birth is going to change, but you could update whatever you wanted to in here. I have done just, uh, just the first name and last name. In the preview, this is how you run just a normal query. Select ID, first name, last name, date of birth, nationality, gender from DB Skills. That's all you're asking it to do. It's just to select those things and put them up on the screen and show us, and that's how we get this here. Then we can go a search, and this says select, and the star represents everything. Select everything from database skills where the first name is like something that you, the user wrote in. Or the last name is like something that your user wrote in. Or the date of birth or the nationality or the gender or the ID are one of the things that the user wrote in. The only issue with this is when something in here like the ID is also something like, say, the date of birth. Like, for example, the one and the one. Or if you did a search for two, you're going to get 1942. You're going to get the second, 25. So if we do a search for two, we should get three results back here. No, four results, because we'll actually get ID two as well. So there you go, we've got four results, because they've all got twos in them. So that's the only issue with this type of query. You could actually just do just a search for first names, or just a search for last names, or you could search by whatever you wanted to, but I've put them all in here to show you how the search works. So that's it, database skills that you need to know for option A, computer science, standard and higher level and database skills that you'll need to have included if you're doing a database in your internal assessment. All right, just a footnote to my video. Um, when I watched the video back and I was just about to publish it, I noticed that the nationality and the gender were in the wrong order. Okay, so um, what I did is I went onto the database and uh, I went to the actual columns and when you go to the columns, gender column was up here and nationality was down there. So I just uh, clicked on the gender column and I actually moved the column. You hit move and you can move the column up or down and I moved them into the right order. Now with all of the other queries, it doesn't make a difference because you're querying the specific column. But when you're doing a search, you're searching the whole database in general. So it puts them in the result, it puts them into the order that the um, database columns were in. So I've gone back and I've fixed that. So now you'll see when we do a search, say so I search female, search, you'll see that the gender is in the right column, the nationality is in the right column. So that is just part of my back end database setup. You need to make sure that the Columns that you make a table on on your website are in the same order as the columns are in the database.